meet our fiscal reserve targets for FY18, <coughs> these adjustments had to be made. Okay. Next point, please. Sorry. Excessive pay increases do not fit with the notion of a budget that is designed to be fiscally conservative and responsive. Five and a half percent pay increases don't match what other people in the county are being paid. The uh, staffing additions are modest this year. In uh, the county, I think we saw a grand total of 6.5 new full-time equivalents being added. If, if you say so. <laughs> and in the MCPS budget, we counted 168. Um, college, new students. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. In the college, uh, we saw eight uh, in the Parks and Plan 15. In WSSC, for the first time ever, no staff increases in that WSSC. Okay, lastly, uh, no revenue controls that are new to us. Uh, we're concerned about income taxes. We think they'll be volatile for the future. And as far as the eye can see, that new reserve uh, procedures are needed. None have been proposed. Secondly, on property taxes, we wrote a report in February. We shared it uh, with Mr. Firestein and asked for his help uh, in addressing a number of new controls that could be implemented to improve property tax collections. Uh, he was uh, not interested in addressing it. I'll be fair to that. Uh, this is an issue I think that is for the next county executive. Um, and for those of, that are candidates for council, uh, I think property taxes are probably our most uh, non-volatile, most reliable revenue source, something that we can use to uh, finance government uh, with some level of confidence. And uh, we need to return to better controls over property taxes. Uh, the uh, recordation and transfer taxes are a key component of our taxes. How uh, do you have a very low inventory, and that's why that number is down? Mm -hmm. The inventory of? Houses for sale. That's true. Well, that's what and that's why that number is down? Uh, well, I, let me just say this. That, uh, the assessments on uh, properties are driven when uh, houses sell. That's, that's well, true. I'm talking about the recordation transfer. Oh, the, re the recordation. Okay. That's why it's down, because we have a very, very low inventory. Right. And this was a new policy initiative. And Nancy can probably speak best to this. But uh, we found that there were a number of households that were escaping our, imp our impact taxes. Uh, Impact taxes are primarily designed for new developments that uh, contribute to demands for housing and uh, firehouses and libraries and all the rest of it. And uh, it was felt that there were large households uh, that were moving into existing properties that had an impact on our school resources and the rest of it, and that the increases in recordation taxes would pick up the slack. Am, am I fairly presenting the argument? Well, a couple of years ago, we increased the rate uh, for larger homes uh, to address that. Uh, you know, uh, but as Sue says, I mean, there's only so much, you know, uh, if, if properties don't sell, uh, you know, there's no, right. you know, it, it, that is totally market dependent. Virginia? Uh, I don't know how much the um, reputation tax brought in for refinance. But I can tell you, when I refinance, going from a, a larger in, um, interest on my house, like from a five to a three, I, I refinance. I had to pay a recordation tax. That's when I learned what a recordation tax was. I said, what are you talking about? This is my house. I'm trying to lower my, my interest rate, and I had to pay a, a, record, a recordation tax. What I'm thinking is maybe because you there is no more lower rate. In other words, people are not refinancing because I, I don't know how much revenue the county was getting from recordation taxes from refinancing. I know that I took it. I didn't even know I had to pay. Well, it lumps up a little bit on refinancing because rates go up. And that plays into the revenue. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's quickly turn to performance budgeting. And three examples of how performance budgeting might inform a budget that uh, so the, the strategic plans are key to performance budgeting. And uh, if we see performance that doesn't meet strategic strategies, uh, if we see increased costs, there are opportunities for 
uh, revisiting the budget. Now, let me give you three examples. I'm going to start, there are no sacred cows in this discussion. So we're going to start with public safety, the police department. Crime's down, but the staffing is bloated in this department, especially investigations where closure rates for each type of crime have dropped. Closure means that you had a crime, it's been investigated, and once we find out who the bad guy is, we put him behind bars. Uh, closure rates are down. Uh, uh, they've dropped uh, to, to up to 27 percent, um, and I'm talking across a range of crimes because the, the actual closure rate depends on whether it's a homicide or a burglary, etc. The investigations unit has a budget of $40 million and 306 employees. Fairfax County, about a million people in Fairfax County, they got crime too, but they have a third fewer investigators, but comparable crime statistics. This is a department, because it's a sacred cow, that has grown over the, the, at least the last decade, and probably one. How long has Chief Major been with this? It's, it's um, probably 15 years. Over 15 years that budget's grown. It's time to take a fresh look at it. And, and I think the, uh, the investigation is a, a place that uh, could easily absorb reductions without any decrease in performance. Actually, can just to, since uh, the chief isn't here to make his own case, I will make a case for him. He has statistics that show that on a per capita basis, Montgomery County is far behind Fairfax, behind any other jurisdiction of a comparable size. And how the department is organized may differ from one jurisdiction to another, and perhaps some of their uh, beat officers do some of the investigations, and uh, that's not something that, that I think I'm uh, able to make a judgment about, uh, but I don't think that uh, the statistics that you're presenting on the police department give the full picture. We'd like to see an independent study done. That's up to the next executive for all of you in the room that are thinking about that job. Turn to HHS next. Very big part of the budget. Very important part of the budget in terms of how we help folks in our county who need the most help. Uh, there's a small program within that large budget called Linkages to Learning. It's a six million dollar program. It's part of the 300 million cent, uh, spent on education activities outside of the MCPS budget. A lot of you may not know this, but there's the MCPS budget, and then there's the money that the council appropriates along with the executive to supplement the budget of MCPS to improve academic performance and a whole host of other things. $300 million. Six million of that goes to a program that is to help folks and families that are struggling in uh, the Wheaton Cluster and the uh, Kennedy Cluster who uh, have uh, challenges because of poverty. We provide help with uh, uh, rent, uh, food, with uh, utilities, uh, we provide uh, health interventions. Uh, these are uh, valuable activities, no, no doubt, but, but unfortunately uh, we haven't seen any impact at all on academic performance with all this. Um, I propose to expand this program in his budget to two more uh, clusters in the coming fiscal year. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, but this program has yet to demonstrate any improved academic performance, and the achievement gap continues to widen. Spending uh, money on these uh, important assists to uh, poor families hasn't made a difference in the academic outcomes in their households. Uh, and supplemental spending on education programs needs to be integrated with the MCPS budget and its strategies. In other words, this is $6 million that could be spent closing the achievement gap. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it would be worse. If well, we, didn't, we don't know for sure. On the other and, and, and let me say, we do evaluate this in the course of the budget, and we have raised these kinds of questions. The council does okay. when we go through this stuff. Inside you baseball, can't prove, folks. You can't, well, it's not inside. No, I, I've got inside baseball. And you're welcome to come to the committee meeting. I, I have inside finish. baseball. Uh, there is a report prepared on linkages to learning that's bottled up in MCPS 
and it hasn't seen the light of day because it has adverse outcome details. We'd like to see that liberated. Well, I, I think the other, you're, um, you're not fully explaining the goal of linkages to learning. It is in part um, a, an academic uh, goal, but it also has to do with the health of not just the children that it serves, but linkages is intended to serve the families of those children. So it, it, it is school-based because that is how you can best reach the families. But it has many components beyond the academic, and that's why it is actually um, appropriated in the county government budget. Okay. Third example. Not, none of these can be easy. It's going to take a lot of advocacy to change the status quo, I guarantee you. Right on transit. $112 million budget, grown year after year, while average ridership has dropped. Region-wide, ridership on buses has dropped 6% in the last year. Largely, there are a number of analyses of this, but one of the number one factors is that poor folks have now got private forms of transportation and they're using them. This budget, Ike has proposed to keep the same, no changes. Okay, I want to turn now quickly to MCPS. <laughs> it's a big growing budget. Come on, God, it is a big budget. You could mine coal with that. It doesn't have a strategic plan linked to performance. It has a strategic plan. It says we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. But it doesn't say how that's going to improve academic results. It doesn't say what that's going to cost. It's really just a wish list. <clears throat> Number one point. Enrollment increases are included in maintenance of effort. So when we fund MCPS at the maintenance of effort level, we're paying for increases in enrollment. You might ask then, what do we get for the extra $19 million that the executive has suggested we fund in addition to the maintenance of effort? I don't know. I've looked at the budget upside down, backwards, inside out. There's no strategic plan to reduce the widening achievement gap. Last year, as I said, our independent analysis said that it grew the gap between African Americans and Hispanic Latino kids and white Asians grew in external measures of math performance. It uh, stayed the same in literacy. This data is normally published in the February presentation to the school board. This is the first year that didn't happen. Wonder why. We wrote the uh, uh, principal and that uh, principal, the superintendent of schools, and asked him for this data. He said, "Well, let me let me think about it." We got a response from his chief of staff saying, "Well, we'll release that data when it's appropriate." And I quote: "Since this request was made only a month ago, I assume the answer will be that we'll know the numbers after the budget's approved." This should be a source of embarrassment to many people. Not be simply because the achievement gap is getting wider. It's been getting wider for years. We first started talking about the achievement gap in the 70s. And that's all we've done ever since this talk. We still don't have concrete strategies with the budget and performance targets. The MCPS base budget is $2.5 million, and it's not crosswalks with the strategies. Only the budget increases. That's in Table 1A, my favorite table, if you have a chance to dive into that budget. Strategic priorities in that table are only 22% of the proposed budget increase. Guess what the rest of it is? It's mostly for salaries and benefits to maintain the status quo. We have uh, a base uh, increase in strategic and longevity increases that are being negotiated as, as we sit and stand here that are subject to negotiation, and none of it's based on performance. It's based on time and grade. Our teachers are paid 15% more than their peers in Fairfax and Howard County, who have excellent SAT scores, excellent academic outcomes. And we have very generous supplemental pension and health plans. West Camp, this, this distresses me the most. I live in East County. 
I was uh, president of the Booster Club and vice president of the school board of the uh, PTA for school improvement for 10 years. And I got to meet a lot of the kids who struggle academically. They're great kids, and oftentimes their, pro their problems are because we aren't doing a good job in the classroom with them. One of the reasons is that West County teachers are paid on average 6% more than East County teachers. The school system knows this. They won't brag about it. It's nothing to brag about. But we pay teachers based on seniority. And we also have a process called free agency. This was negotiated with the union years ago. It allows any teacher in East County who's unhappy for whatever reason to get up and leave and go to the West County. Who would? In West County, they have shorter school days, fewer classroom interruptions, and better career paths. I wouldn't blame anybody for making that choice. The problem is that we don't have any strategies to address it. So if you want to have an impact in the achievement gap, but you're telling, telling me that you're paying your teachers 6% less, and whenever a, a teacher becomes seasoned and experienced, you allow them to leave, and principals in East County tell me, and I'm sure anybody in the school system has heard this, that the number one thing that principals in East County schools do is retrain replacement teachers. Uh, we're kind of spinning our wheels here on the achievement gap. Teachers have received 37% uh, in pay increases over the last 10 years. Uh, a lattice program, a program to keep teachers in East County, was quietly discontinued last year. Continuing previous trends, we try to tackle the achievement gap in East County with paraeducators. These are not certified teachers. These are folks like us. We've been doing this for years because teachers are just too darn expensive Whenever you increase the pay of anybody that's delivering a service, and this isn't just MCPS, this isn't general county government, service will deteriorate unless you increase the budget because the unit cost of service delivery just went up. High benefit costs are the generous defined benefit retirement plans. There aren't many of those left in the, in the country, let alone in the county. General county employees have a defined contribution plan. The defined benefit plan says, you're, going to, you're guaranteed to give this much. And a very, uh, what that's I call a, a cat. Thing, I think that's a product of state law. Well, well, well this is a, somebody else. Yeah, both, both of our uh, monopolies in this county are uh, products of, of state engineering. Uh, in the case of uh, MCPS, it's, it's act they actually supervise uh, the school system. Our inspector general isn't allowed to look at them. And uh, we do not approve their, any component of their budget. We approve their budget in the aggregate. Well, I, I think also it's important to note that um, the general county employees in Montgomery County since 1994 have been in a defined contribution plan. We did that thinking that everyone else would follow suit. Well, in fact, there are very few, very few other government entities around the country that have a defined contribution plan. And I'm not aware of any school system. So when you want to do comparisons on one hand, you need to make sure that you're doing it on, you know, fairly on we other do that. things. So we look at total compensation in but, this region. But, 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 but the, other, that, the other thing is everyone needs to understand, the school system is technically a state agency in many respects. We contribute, we pay their bills, and we supplement a lot of their services with other things. But they are governed by state law, and that precludes uh, our engagement in a lot of these things. I will tell you, though, uh, two years ago when I was council president and I proposed a tax increase, I'm the one who negotiated with the school system. And because then again, the additional dollars were supposed to go largely to compensation. And actually, the full council agreed we weren't going to do that. And they did agree. Actually, the school system employees took a, a small haircut. And uh, they did put additional um, uh, service delivery of teachers and programs in the East County. So it can be done, but it's very, very difficult because it is not within the parameters of the budget. Okay. Last point, we've already covered this, 45 cents of every dollar we give MCPS goes to overhead. When you include the generous defined benefit plan and the Cadillac health plan, almost 75 cents out of every dollar goes to 
something that does have any impact at all on academic performance. Let's turn to WSSC real quick. This is the other fun one. This is also a, a state law enabled organization. That's because we share them with Prince George's County yeah, forever. Uh, WSSC, if you account for their budget of almost $800 million, brings our total budget much closer to $7 billion in the aggregate. You might ask yourself, what's the difference between WSSC and other county services? Well, WSSC is independent uh, from the county in terms of its uh, debt uh, authority. It has its own budget, although its budget is approved by the county, as well as Prince George's County. Both counties approve the budget. When we approve the budget, uh, we basically approve a rate increase. That's what hits your quarterly water bill. This year, the negotiated compromise is 4.5%. Prince George's County proposed 4%. County Exec Ike, Ike Leggett proposed 5%. They met in the middle after negotiating on some capital budget items at 4.5%. You might ask yourself, well, what do I get for that 4.5%? The water still tastes the same. No. It's worse. Well, well, we, we can talk about that's not a budget issue, so we'll, we'll stay off of that. Um, rates can't continue to increase at this pace. Part of the problem is that our revenues from other sources other than the rate base are shrinking. System development charges. This is what we charge developers for every new hookup and new developments. Those have been declining year after year, and we haven't increased them. I don't know why. I, I suspect there's some political reasons. I, I guess things I don't understand is I often attribute that way. But this is a burden for ratepayers, and uh, it's unfortunate. It happens at a time when uh, everything else is going up. Next uh, point, uh, This is uh, this is something very few people know. We learned it because it was a, a study done last year at the request of the Public Service Commission to look at what it actually costs to produce a drop of water. And in that report, they told us how much of the capacity that we're paying for actually produces revenue. 32% is the answer. 32% of the combined water and sewer processing doesn't produce a single dollar of revenue because we have 18% of the water we produce is lost, according to an audit that was done. Some of that's because of leaky pipes. Some of that's because valves in places, big users at NIH are ancient and undermeasure the, the amount of consumption. Another big part of lost capacity is what is attributable to the fact that sewer pipes are buried in many cases under screens, and water infiltrates into those pipes and has to be processed along with sewage, and that infiltration rate is a tremendous uh, 45, 40, 45, 45%? 43%. 43%, thank you. Uh, combined, this is 32% of the capacity that doesn't generate revenue, but we're paying for it. We, there is no benchmarking data that we've been able to find on this, but we would like to see a study, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, the Public Service Commission declared last year, thanks to the good work of Richard Bolta, a private citizen on his own nickel, who declared that the rates, which you all see on the back of your quarterly bills, are discriminatory. But discriminatory against large users. More importantly, they have no relationship to the cost of water. I'm going to wrap up right now. If you have a, a fee for a government service that doesn't bear any relationship to a cost, it's a tax. The PSC said if the rates are discriminatory, you've got to fix it. Um, WSSC has a plan to fix it, but it won't be implemented for another year. A study found that they have excessive staffing. Real quickly now, just kind of run this for you. Yeah, there it is. Information technology, yeah. Yep, excessive staffing, next. Uh, their debt, just like we have debt challenges, their debt is a time bomb. And this is probably the most important takeaway, folks, because in less than five years, WSSC is going to reach the point of insolvency where they can't pay their bills, specifically their debt service. And they have a bailout, they have taxing authority, they can add an ad valorem tax to the property tax bill you all pay. So in addition to paying rates on every drop of water you consume, you will be paying a property tax. I can almost tell you with certainty, unless WSSC implements cost controls, this will happen. Uh, debt service is $277 million, or 36% of their operating budget. In 1998, we did a statewide study of WSSC because debt service rates reached that point. 
and it resulted in a 30% reduction in WSSC costs. Nobody's talking about that today. We're still paying for that debt reduction. Yeah. And here's, yeah. here's why it's going to happen. Interest rate risk. WSSC actually has a pretty good treasury function, as, as does the county. And they do a pretty good job of rolling over debt, and they've done a good job of refinancing debt with low rates. But rates are going to go up. We know that. And there's a chance of a sustained interest rate spike. And if that lasts for longer than a year, we're in trouble at WSSC. How could that happen, you might ask? Well, we have growing debt needs because pipes are wearing out. We have the legacy of EPA uh, consent decrees where we have to do work on our pipe system. Uh, this is a serious problem. The next executive inherits this. And I think with that, I'll stop. Are there any other questions or comments? No. 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 Robert. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have a question I wanted to ask our experts. Um, we have a billion dollars in the pension fund. We have $400 million in reserves. These two funds last year earned about 15%. This was the best year last year in the stock market in the last 30 years. As a result of earning 15%, they took $22 million out of the reserves and put it for spending. The amount invested, and I'll just name two stocks that you might have heard of. Amazon. Amazon is a very popular company. We're spending $8 billion to try to bring it to Maryland in the long run. Amazon stock over the last year appreciated about 70%. And yet only a minuscule amount of both the reserves and pension funds were invested in Amazon stock. Another stock you might have heard of, Apple which is the stock that Warren Buffett, the most famous investor in America, has increased more than any other stock of his holdings in the last year. Our pension funds and reserves are invested only a minuscule amount in Apple stock. Yeah. Why, aren't we getting, why aren't we getting a better return? Do this at a campaign. Why, why aren't we getting a better return in our $1 billion in pension funds and $400 million in reserves, why are we getting less than index fund returns? I'll now pass it on to our ex officio member of the retirement. Yeah, well, there are three of us actually um, sitting up here. And I've been on the board for the whole time that I've been the OMB director for seven years, Alex joined a year and a half ago when um, he became the finance director. Marlene is our newest member uh, when she became council um, executive director. She was also appointed. So um, it is absolutely certain that our investment trust um, in fact performs better than almost any other public trust. We have um, a fiduciary obligation to, in fact, invest in, um, in uh, investments that are not speculative in any way, shape, or form, and that, are, in fact, are relatively safe. So uh, we have active management of our portfolio, and we have um, some others. We are very diversified. There is no question in my mind that you will have a very hard time finding any other trust of our size that is as well managed as ours. And that has, in fact, we've gone from, when I started on the board from about 73% funded, we are now over 92% funded for the retirement system. So that's a pretty good track record. So, so you don't think Amazon and Apple are safe investments? Sorry. 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 I would ask some more questions. We're going to try to stop this at 9.40 because we have other things. Two minutes. 
Sir, I, I, I appreciate where you're coming from, but I did 20 years on Wall Street, and the idea that you want to take a uh, reserve fund and a pension fund and invest it in heavily in equity is totally insane. <laughs> Nobody in their right mind would even consider that. Those are supposed to be there for for, for, for rainy days. You don't take a rainy day fund and invest it heavily in equities. That would be contrary to all fiscal management of any kind, you know, at, at any level. It's just, it's... It, it's, it's too risky. It's, it's insane, yes. You put small amounts in, that's fine. Frankly, 15% performance on a reserve fund or a pension fund is, is pretty, pretty solid performance. Following up on that, I, 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 like, I, like, I, I like to wonder if, if, if the current county budget reports, like the also account, also account, also account for what, what, what spending will be reduced or cut for, given, given this year's investments for, 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 uh, towards, towards the uh, Amazon package. Uh, uh, since, since, we are, uh, since we are talking about about the Your question is whether the, count, the budget would be, would be affected <coughs> by Amazon? First of all, we don't know if Amazon is going to come. So we're not planning on it. Really, then, 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 the pack, then, then the package you That's prepared. the state package, not local. That's not real, so nothing <coughs> in the county budget. That's not the county budget, no. Right, the, the deal that was agreed to was in Annapolis. Uh, uh, do, do, you know, do you know how uh, how much of that money that, that, that would have what would have originally gone to the count, uh, county budget from the state that is, is being used? There, there isn't any, any expenditure that is um, budgeted in the FY19 budget for, the, for getting Amazon, so, or once Amazon is here. What has been, well, I mean, that's the most I can say. We can't talk about the particulars of what the county has offered at this point. Um, uh, what we can say is that if Amazon comes, there will be they will uh, still have to pay various taxes and the like uh, that we may or may not get otherwise. Uh, and the great thing is the state package for transportation funding. Uh, the state has never ponied up to it as to contributing to Montgomery County for their capital expenditures that they're committing to in this transportation package that they've agreed to in Annapolis. Of course, it's going to be spread over the town. Uh, but uh, frankly, in my view, it's, you know, it, well, it's, it's never happened before. It should have happened long ago. It's not going to happen uh, that Montgomery County will get those state dollars for local transportation improvements unless Amazon comes. Uh, this is just a fact of our reality. So be aware of that. I have a question about the makeup of property tax revenues. What is the change that's taken place, let's say, since the 2007 period on the, the revenues from residential as opposed to commercial property taxes? Uh, yeah, I don't have a breakdown. But, but roughly, you must know what kind of shifts because you see an awful lot of vacancy in commercial property I mean, what we around do see, the county. I mean, what we do see is a lot of reassessments on the commercial side, which have a negative impact on the property tax revenues, much more so than on the residential side. Uh, but I don't have any precise numbers on that. Jennifer, in putting the budget together, you must have some idea what's the... He's a, I'll say he's a new guy since he said he's here for he two years. He budgets the money, I spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, but we're into overtime now. Okay. I want to thank uh, Councilman Fleury, and I want to thank OMB Director Jennifer Hughes, and I want to thank Alex Espinosa from the Department of Finance, and we thank Marlene. Uh,
who is going to probably be speaking next year on behalf of the budget because she'll understand more than maybe some of the new council members might. <laughs> Uh, 